JavaScript is an object-oriented language, and we can make new objects using the new keyword with a constructor function. For instance, if you have a dog constructor function with three parameters, name, breed, and weight, you can make a dog like this by calling the dog function with new and passing in argument values for name, breed, and weight. Then you have a new dog object, Fido. In HeadFirst JavaScript programming, Eric and I take you through how to make constructor functions and how to use them to make objects with properties like name, breed, and weight, as well as methods like bark. We also step you through the process of putting methods in your prototype objects. A prototype object is the object that your dog instances inherit properties and methods from. JavaScript inheritance is known as prototypal inheritance because all objects that you create inherit properties and methods from a prototype object. By using prototypes, you can make your objects more efficient. For instance, in Chapter 13 of HeadFirst JavaScript Programming, we show how to move methods that are common to all dogs into the dog prototype so each dog instance can share the bark, run, and wag methods rather than having their own. And we showed you how you can override methods by adding methods to a dog instance rather than to the prototype. So you can create bark code that's specific to one dog, like Spot here, without affecting the bark method for all the other dogs that are inheriting from the dog prototype. In the book, we use constructor functions like we have here. A function dog to create dog objects, and we add methods and properties to the dog prototype the object that dog instance objects inherit from, that all dogs should inherit, like the species property and the bark, run, and wag methods. JavaScript ES6, that is the sixth edition of the ECMAScript specification, which was published in 2015, introduced new syntax for creating JavaScript objects. This syntax uses the class keyword and replaces the constructor functions you're used to using. Inside the class, you specify a constructor, which is where you set the properties for the objects you'll create from the class. And this is similar to the constructor function that you've been using. You can also specify prototype properties and methods as part of the class. When you first see this syntax, it's going to look a little bit strange. A class looks a bit like an object, but you don't separate the components of a class with a comma like you separate the properties of an object. We don't write function in front of the prototype methods. And for properties we want to add to the prototype, we use the keyword get. It's important to remember that just because we're using a new keyword class, that doesn't mean that JavaScript has changed how it works at a fundamental level. JavaScript still uses prototypal inheritance. If you're also learning a language like Java or another language that uses the class keyword, don't get confused by this. JavaScript objects that you create from a class are still inheriting from a prototype object, so that part hasn't changed. In a way, you can think of the class syntax as just another way of writing constructor functions. There are a few subtle differences in how classes are represented internally and in how they work, but for the most part, classes are really just another way of writing constructor functions. Personally, I think that using the class keyword here may cause some confusion for people who are coming to JavaScript from a language like Java, which may in turn create some confusion about how inheritance works in JavaScript. On the other hand, I do like the way the syntax allows us to package the instance properties and methods with the prototype properties and methods. Let's take a quick look at some code so you can actually see how it works to move from using a constructor function to using a class. So what I'll do here is I'll transition from using a constructor function and adding properties and methods to the prototype to using a class for this dog uh, constructor function. So all I have to do here is change this to class. And then what was the constructor function becomes the constructor inside the dog. Now we can add prototype methods and properties directly inside this class. So the species is now going to become a get function. And that doesn't change. So we're just going to return the string k9 every time we reference the species 
property that, that is now a property in the prototype because it's a getter function. And then similarly, we're going to add bark as a function. And remember, using the class syntax, we don't have to write function at all, but everything else is going to stay the same. And we don't use, oops, we don't use any semicolon or commas between the parts of the class, which is going to seem a little strange, but we don't do that. You can use a semicolon and it'll just ignore it. So keep adding that. Okay, so that's the end of our class. And so now we should be able to create a dog just like we did before using the class instead of using the constructor function and everything else stays the same. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to load up dogs and just ignore that message. So let's see if we've got a Fido and we do. So if we open him up, we'll see we've got breed name and weight set to Fido mixed and 38, which are the arguments we passed in to the constructor. And then also notice we've got this species here, which if we click on the three dots, is going to say canine. But notice that it's in a different color. So it's actually in, it, that's indicating that it's actually in the prototype. And if we open up the prototype, which this special variable here, which you don't really get access to in your code, but you can uh, open it up in the, in the Chrome console. If you open that up, now you're looking at the prototype object for the dog. And you can see all those methods, the bark, run, and wag methods that we put um, into the dog are now in the prototype, which is what we wanted. So we've got bark, run, and wag are all in the prototype. And then we've also got that species that we just looked at. So this is kind of a re repeat of what we're seeing here. Um, and then you can see that we've got that getter function. So let's try fido.species. And you don't just, you don't type fido.get species, you just type fido.species to access that property, just like you did before. And everything else should work the same. So I'm going to say fido.bark. Fido says woof, that's correct, because Fido's weight is greater than 25. So everything's working the same as it did before. So if we take a look at Fido, the object, As I said before, you can act, you can see the, the properties that it has and the methods that we add and property that we added to the prototype. If we look at a dog that was created with an old fashioned constructor function, which I have that here, you can see it's going to be a little bit different. So if I, if we go in here and look at the constructor, you can see that the constructor for the dog that was created with a class says class dog. All right, if we go in and look at the constructor for a dog that was created using an old fashioned constructor function, we can see that it's a function. Now, behind the scenes, classes and functions are very similar because a class is a constructor function. JavaScript recognizes that there are two different things now internally, but it's, um, Chrome is gonna show you the old fashioned way of creating it. It's gonna look a little bit different than using a class. Now, if we test type of dog, dog is still a function, even though it's defined as a class. So that's because behind the scenes, they're kind of the same thing. And before, when we were using old fashioned, oops, type of dog, old fashioned constructor function, of course it was a function. One other small difference that you should be aware of is that classes are not hoisted like regular functions are. If you remember from head-first JavaScript programming, functions are hoisted, meaning that function definitions are visible everywhere, even above where they're defined. That's because JavaScript makes two passes over your code. The first defines all your functions, and then on the second pass, JavaScript starts executing your code. Well, classes are not hoisted, so you can't do this. Um, if, you, if you want to define Fido above the class, you're going to get an error. So let's try that. And now you see we've got an uncaught reference error, dog is not defined. We're trying to use the class dog before we've defined it. Whereas before, if that was an old fashioned constructor function, that would have worked just fine. So that's one small difference also to keep in mind.
Let's take a look at how we can write the diagram for dogs to show how the inheritance works and see the relationship between the constructor function, or class, and the prototypes and instances. This works the same way as it did before, so whether you use a class or an old-fashioned constructor function, this part does not change. We create a constructor function, so in our case that's function dog. We then use this to create a dog object. The dog object inherits from the dog prototype which inherits from the object prototype. The dog prototype keeps a pointer to the constructor function that was used to create the dog, so we know how dogs are created. All dogs that are created from this constructor function will have the same prototype and the same pointer to the constructor. And it works the same way for a class. There's no difference except some very subtle details, some of which you've seen, but remember that underneath the covers, a class is really still a constructor function, although of course JavaScript can distinguish between a class and a constructor function, so it is a bit special. So that's how you use the class keyword to create objects in JavaScript. All current versions of modern browsers support the class keyword now, so you can use it to program. Make sure if you publish a web page and you're using this new syntax that all your web visitors are using the up-to-date browsers. If you're not sure, then you should stick with the old-fashioned syntax from JavaScript ES5 instead for a bit longer. If you need a refresher on creating objects and prototypal inheritance in JavaScript, then check out Headfirst JavaScript Programming. And let us know if this was helpful and what else you'd like to learn from Wickedly Smart. <laughs>